Tutti. Yeah. And everyone, good evening, one and all. Bless. Good evening, listeners. Welcome to. I want to say Waterhouse vibes, but someone is saying I should call it Firehouse vibes, you know? <laughs> but it's the same group again every Sunday. We, we gather and we talk and. Sometimes we try to pick sense out of nonsense and we, we, you know, put together something that you enjoy. This Sunday, this Sunday, we have a focus on the ganja industry in Jamaica. And what we have tried to do is assemble some, some individuals from that industry to come and tell us what's happening. Okay. My name is Michael Nita. I'm the host here alongside Maxine Stowe, who's, um, you know, she's from the ganja industry, entertainment, Many music hats. executive <laughs> involved in Jamaican creative arts for some time. We have Patrick McCarthy, a brother from Waterhouse, who <laughs> we call him our mentor because he, this brother is the man who initiate a, a number of organization workers, from which we continue to reap the benefits of that work. Lass, Lass is a very good comrade of mine out at Greenwich Farm. We've been working together, stirring up trouble in Kingston and St. Andrew for a while. Now he's in, land, in Toronto. And of course, our resident intelligence officer brother herb nelson when it comes to security and what have you herbs a man know what's going on they can't hide nothing from him <laughs> he might have to get dig deep so with that we're gonna three individuals i expect to join us errol Orton, lindell freighter and vicky Anson. all three individuals are involved in the industry and Mr. Artney, somehow we have no problem getting him, patching him, but we're still trying. So, we're going to start off with an overview. Sister Maxine going to give us an overview. I said, what the industry is. I see, I see now we have Vicky coming on board. Vicky. Hi, Sister Vicky. Sister Vicky. Not hearing her. Brother Arton. Bless him. Can you unmute? He's, to join he's... us? Yes, I have unmuted. Check one. Love, love my brother. Hello. So we have Hello. Brother Arton with us now. Yeah. Sister, Sister Vicky, can you unmute? Yes. Hello, good evening. Are you hearing me? Yes, we're hearing yes, you. hearing you loud and clear. Yes. All right, great. Y yes, yes. Yes. Well, they, they just got me off the hook, Vicky and you Errol. Join I the conversation, I had to do. <laughs> brother. No, I, 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 I defer Vicky. now to when we... Errol. <laughs> and what, what happened? Now, I say I'll defer to Errol to give an overview of the ganja industry. Some more, I, I'm, I'm lost, I, you know, Hello? between the thoughts and what have you. Oh, uh, let me see if I can pick up. Yeah, yeah. Back where, where, am I being hurt? Am I being hurt, please? When both of you join, Brother Errol, can you hear me? Yes, clearly. Yes. Sister Vicky, can you hear me? You're muted. Yes, yes okay. I am. Okay, she's muted. Yes, I am. Oh, she's okay now. Okay. Yeah. All right. When both of when both of you join, join, we were at the point where Sister Maxine was going, you know, was going to give us an overview of the ganja industry in Jamaica, a brief overview. After which. We'll have some questions 
and we open up the bridge and sister. Mikey. You clear on that? I think you're yeah. not hearing um, Maxine. Yes. She was saying since Errol joined, I mean, she would prefer Errol give an overview of the industry. Yes, because I was really going to do it because Errol was having difficulty, but I'd rather Errol set the framework. Are you okay with that, Errol? Frozen. Brother Errol? Sure. Yeah, but I must warn you, yes, I'm, you in, I'm in okay. St. Mary Bush and outside, as you, if you can see, and I'm trying my best. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, man. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. We understand. We understand. Hello? Hello? One thing yeah, you can't hear you. Your I, I, was, I, I must warn. Your I'm in Wayne St. Mary in the bush, and I'm having... Okay tremendous difficulty with my signal okay so it's intermittent as you can see but i'll be happy to, to go go as long as it, it holds yes. okay okay all right okay all right um the ganja industry as it is in jamaica right now is in shambles the, and, and I'm, I'm a man who is brutally frank and um and i will always be that way through the program all right um you're asking about joining. Uh, um, Can we see more of your face, Errol? Your kind of your camera, kind of. <clears throat> you, you see what is happening is the minute I go to camera, the signal weakens and it Errol, will we eventually go away. Face? So if you can bear the blank, I, I don't know if you can put something up or something, but I'll try to be on camera. All right. Okay, okay. Okay, okay go ahead. Uh, is that better? Yes. Continue. Hello? Yeah, Continue. Yeah. We can't do the audio in. If, that is, if, if audio works, we'll work with audio. You messed with it, now it disappeared. <laughs> Together. Well, I, I'll also state that yeah, Vicky it's, is it's very... St. Mary. St. Mary. <laughs> right, Look, um, uh, it, it, here's let, a puzzle, Let me try and assist the process here. Good afternoon, and my apologies for being late. Um, the ganja industry, as, as Errol was saying, is kind of falling into shambles. What happened is that we leaped frog from a illicit space, quote-unquote, into a medicinal framework, which is not something that is uh, culturally aligned to us, so to speak. We have used cannabis in a cultural space, in a medicinal space, but not your pharmaceutical type of setup that is happening globally as it relates to culturally. Um, in the last presentation of our ministry, uh, Minister of Industry, at Canex over the weekend, he highlighted that there were 160 licenses across the sector being in both uh, dispensaries, cultivators, uh, transport, and the like. However, one of the concerns of the association, the Ganja Growers Association, and other partners and stakeholders in the industries, how many of those licenses are still active? Because they have, persons have been granted license, but they find it hard to survive in a space that is highly regulated in terms of the fees, which are very high, and in terms of the strictures. In, so you have to have security cameras. You must have a track and trace system. So tagging of plants, and you also must sell these plants into a quote-unquote dispensary or medicinal free. Now, not that we are against regulation, but the regulation is of such being interim from 2015 does not allow and accept for how we would have culturally used the plant over the years. 
So um, in recent, as recent as August, uh, Rastafari again was granted sacramental, and this sacramental um, promulgation came in August 2023 that recognized only certain spaces, 57 of them, I think the number is. Is that, am I correct, Maxine? I think it's 57. It's 57, but, uh, but again, it's a blend. Some of right. them are cultivating With some spaces are, yes, and uh, individuals and so on, um, which is something that we are not used to. But then I, I found it ironic because our our ministers hold up the international law to say, you know, we can't we we can't do certain operate and a certain regulation because we have this international law and treaty that we signed to. However, on one hand we are giving sacramental rights which is our cultural right so if we are doing that we need to be clear across the board as to how we regulate so a lot is unfolding not in a way that is structured but also in a way that is more of a knee-jerk reaction um to the community and in and and i dare say too not necessarily with the contribution the serious contribution of members of the of the community so it to errol's point to say it's in a shamble it it kind of is all over the place because we have that on one hand i mean then we have imported imported products that are reaching into the hands of children and there are supposed to be regulations that govern that and cover that but they are not there and so where you have locally, they tell the local industry players that edibles, for example, is not allowed and we don't allow for edibles. Yet still, you have edibles being imported from California, say, state in Delta 8 on the packages reaching the hands of primary school students um, without, without really engaging the stakeholders in the industry for proper regulation. So that's where we are in the industry. It is happening a, a number of, and, and I must say that this is not just only in Jamaica because you have Bahamas and a number of other Caribbean islands looking to follow suit, I dare say, the Jamaican model that is not necessarily a fit model based on how we are we have evolved in this industry. A question, a, a question, Vicky. You mentioned about fees. Um, to become a, what what are the requirements to become registered in the industry, in terms of um, the fees? In terms of do you need land? Do you need do you need um, a specific requirement in terms of space? All of yes, that kind of stuff. You you do you do. First of all, in order to really firstly. <coughs> Before you can even, let's say, for example, a cultivator license. Before you can get a cultivator license, you have to show that you have access to the land. And if, you, if it's a land that you own, you need to take your title, take the relevant um, documents to show that you have the right to grow on this property. If it's a land that is leased, or rented, you have to say to the owners of the of, of the property, I'm going to grow cannabis on this property. And or they themselves will now have to give you permission to allow for growing of cannabis on the property. It is the same thing with a dispensary. If you you have to show that you are the required full owner of the location, the property that you're going to open a dispensary on. If not, you'll have to show that you have the permission to do so. Once you have shown that and demonstrated that there are other things that you now need to put in place. So you, you pay a fee first. There is a deposit fee that you have to pay. Um, a, a registration fee, so to speak. What is that? Pardon? How much is how much is that? The fees? When you, when you talk I, I, I'd have about to the fees, can you give us a I, I can give okay. you in a few. I, I, I do have the fees. I'll have to look. They are all in US dollars, I, I must say to you as well. What? So, 
that that too brings brings with it it its own in, in uh, Jamaica. Yeah, yeah, that brings with it its own issues because as I said, the the, the I think the, the registration fee or the application fee rather for, for the correct word is yeah. is in three hundred I think it's three hundred US dollars. 300 US dollars application fee. Um the, so yeah, so I have the fee now. So the app so for a tier one cultivator, which is the smallest cultivator, tier one is US two thousand dollars. A tier two cultivator, which is um I think above one acre um, is two thousand five hundred. And tier three, which is five acres and above, three thousand US dollars. And per that's, year. That's that's per that's, year. That's per yes, year. Yes, that's per year. But there has been negotiation with the government to change the licensing structure from a yearly to more of a probably two years, every two years or three years. We are we are still in conversation with them with that um as i said there is an application fee the application fee for individuals is 300 us dollars per application so let's just say for example you want to apply for a cultivator's license and you want to apply for a dispensary's license you are paying 300 us dollars for the cultivation license and you have to pay another 300 us dollars for the dispensary license so it's per application if it's a company business or cooperative it is 500 dollars the application fee and the application fees are non-refundable fees right so so, so, I, so whether I, you're I, successful or not or you not get, right that's that's the money. application for for doing the activities, for going in there, doing whatever documentation, because there are investigations that have to happen and the processing. So that's the basic application. Um, A question, I, Vicky. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know if you, if, if, if you have an answer to this, but the fact that you're in Jamaica, why, is, why, is, why are the fees quoted in? In, in US Jamaica? dollars. All right, let us step back in history um part of this and and I, I a lot of persons give a flat for this but part of this i remember when we started the conversation and i would blame us somewhat I, and then i say us i mean participants in the industry when we just started the conversation back then everybody thought that this was green gold and we're going to make a lot of money and the <laughs> industry it should be priced in US dollars and pegged in US dollars because it's US dollars industry. The smuggling was the height of whatever. The illegal, the idea of it at the time was the illegal industry was in, in US dollars. Even some of our representatives who were at the negotiation table and part of the association sat at the table and agreed to the fees being done in US dollars. And so that's why I said we have to take some form of responsibility for it because there were persons, even amongst ourselves, who were at the table who it wasn't in until hindsight, let's say hindsight is 2020, that they say, oh hell, um, this industry isn't going out the way we are we wanted it to go. We shouldn't have pegged it to the US dollars. So to answer your question. It started out with the expectation that this was going to be a booming business. And if we pegged it to the US dollars, uh, investors were also coming into the space at the time as well. Um, so you had several persons coming from Canada and the US. I could name a few companies, which I won't do because I'll get in trouble. But they yeah. came on board. So persons, they, that, that, that was the thinking behind it. However, I, 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 get, I get that. I, 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 um, I pretty much knew that answer before you asked <laughs> yeah. the question. Yeah. But um, yeah. I really asked the question to say this, that one of the things I clearly detect, and it's no surprise, 
you know, even even when you know um, Errol was here and he's, he started out by saying it is in shambles. That's really no surprise. Yeah. The problem is that historically we have we ourselves yeah. have a problem in terms of how we deal, right? And when I say we, I mean we as Jamaicans, right? Because we have this we have this tendency to walk behind. The, 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 the Bakra Masa, right? Which has always been our downfall, right? That's why we, we, we are wearing the state wearing. The problem is that, as I understand it, setting up the, the, the industry in Jamaica, it is patterning again what's being done in the US, right? So everything is, everything is walking behind the master, right? Walking behind the very ones who put us in the state that we are in, right? Um, if we look at the, 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 the product historically, right, coming in, in our Jamaican culture and all of that, it is one where it existed before all of this alabaloo about smuggling and all of that started taking place. What happens is the American in particular came down to Jamaica and they decided to monetize it and start the smuggling process. At that time, it wasn't even looked at as, as smuggling. It was looked at as a normal activity, right? More looked at like export, right? Unregulated export, um, non-traditional export, right? So it was kind of semi-legitimate. It wasn't until Jamaicans started to really get involved in the smuggling process that it became criminalized right so all these laws have been built up i i, I would i would rather we look at that and dissect that right and look at how it has brought us to where we are today because that's really where the pro the crux of the problem is right it's because the old control of the industry Right, it's being you know we are trying to decentralize it to, to take it out of the hands of the the, the, the bakra massa, right, and take it down to the ordinary growers, getting some action out of it, right, that can profit them, and this has always been where the problem is because even with the smuggling, it wasn't a problem until Jamaicans themselves started to get involved in it. What 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 I would love to find out is i mean we know that before legalization i mean ganja production was like a social safety net for a big cross section of the jamaican population you know who had to get into to to to, to ganja cultivation because the, the the economy was not providing for them the kind of social support and the kind of economic support, right? To send their kids to school to, uh, or just to survive. Uh, when you told me that there's 160, there were 160 um, participants locally in this association. I mean, I'm trying to figure out those what? are the licenses. Those are the, li license. the, the, the licenses. I'm trying to figure out in my head. Okay, 160 licenses. What of those traditional cultivators? Are they among this this 160? Or are they pretty much on their own in the bushes somewhere in Jamaica? I, if I could um, step in a little bit. To just say, I just read an article by Kevin Edmund. He's a researcher um, at a, I don't remember the university. It's Canada. He's in Canada. Canada, okay. He quoted, which is necessary for us to have a framework of the, of the traditional industry that they call illicit, right? And the figures that make up that industry were anywhere between 9 billion Jamaican to 11 billion 
and it didn't at that time within his analysis where he got um from seizures and you know he has a framework that he extracted because in in this whole development of the industry we have not been comfortable or willing to speak um clearly what the existing industry um is is how it's quantified it's huge so even when they use words like illicit going into legal you don't get the sense of understanding how many billion dollars are at play Absolutely. but because of the regulations coming from the united nations it stipulated that no one that was in the jamaican gander none of that billions of dollars that was made up the industry could be reinvested in the new industry there was a firewall put up right and so this the the, the way around it in this effort was to bring in foreign capital this was the um the, the thinking method, the thinking to bring in foreign capital it, that it wasn't just foreign capital also because the foreign capital would have been um linked to technology and you know uh other knowledge that was needed in jamaica to in their head make us um you know invest compliant. more in com not just compliant but for the medicinal market medicinal pharmaceutical um framework that they were imposing that it required a lot of understanding for example we can't just grow it anywhere because the metals that are in our soil or you know the the, the chemicals um they wouldn't be appropriate for the standardized export of the ganja you know to whatever they had framed out as would be the business you know development for the industry so realistically we were handcuffed um going into the industry because we are also um identified as a transshipment um country high up on the list of the the um un the, uh, the um, right the international right and the, this is uh, not for ganja i mean we are exporting ganja but the focus was on our transshipment of cocaine yeah. and the the um different you know issues that have come with that like the trade for guns and you know a lot of madness because just it's to fact, add, yeah go ahead Vicky. yeah just to add to what uh Sister maxine just said because she made a very important and and a uh, question you asked sir Crawford, um about it being legal and I, I, I caution persons to you we are not legal so that's the first thing we are decrim it's decriminalized so it's a different ball game from being legal which brings in the point that sister maxine raised that persons who were in that illicit space before couldn't just come out now and say they want to be in the industry because they had especially criminal records exactly they had this record of cultivating and if they the only record that we expunged here was if you were held for a small split or joint then you could get that expunged but if you were viewed as being in the industry as a grower as a grower you were not allowed because you, you, you were seen as being part of the quote-unquote drug stream so but, that, but, that that's a I, major point yeah, and if a major I, if point I, if you can just, just, add, if you can just add to the point there as well right from the american perspective because again like i said it's a situation of walking behind the very ones who would persecute us and 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 who have always been right the main benefactors of it right is when you look at in the united states it's a similar situation state state to state 
there has been decriminalization and the setting up of dispensaries and so on. But federally, it has not been legalized, right? Even though they take taxes from it, they'll always take taxes. But this is what I'm talking about. It has become more about the money. It has always been about the money because that's where the criminalization part came in. Because it, it existed in the culture before, right? All of this alabaloo. But it's really a matter of who benefits, who is really supposed to benefit. And that's, I, I, why, that's why it comes back to, in terms of what the, um, you know, the quotes in US dollars and all of this, it's all part of the restriction to keep out who they want to keep out as well. They're not going to say that, but that's what it is. But I, I also want to, 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 you know, the reason why I'm framing it in the, as a, in the billion dollar industry, it's bigger than the cigarette industry of Carreras. You understand? Is that the growers are the low hanging earners of this industry. The least. As you said in the, um, as you were explaining how the, the smuggling started in Jamaica with the hippies in the 70s, you know, um, that they not just came to Jamaica, they went to every strong ganja country in the world, whether it was Mexico, um, Thailand, you understand? South Africa, Colombia, you had a set of persons out of the United States that went into every of these areas and um, engaged in the marijuana ganja industry. When they left or uh, when they came in and transformed the local industry, the shipping, as you were talking about, was taken over now by the merchant class, the people who had access to the boats, the planes, the containers, and the wharfs. So the growers are still um, existing in the illicit industry in a framework that there is a hierarchy. You understand what I'm saying? So when we are discussing the potential for investment um, in the local industry, it would be coming from a hierarchy, you understand, that controls the export market and the, 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 the funds, because I think the, um, the, the well, professor... Well, here, here, here's the thing, Maxine, to that point we mm -hmm. just made, mm -hmm. right? The problem is that one is not supposed to have anything to do with the other. Because now we're talking about setting up something that is legitimate, right? It might not be legalized, but it's, it's going to operate with some legitimacy. And it's not supposed to be um, coming out of what existed before. But at the same time, right, they have already started to set up the structure, right, where it's still going to maintain that old hierarchy, right? The old oligarchy who was the real ones making the money, right? And, 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 and giving pennies to the, the, to the farmers, right? And they're duping us into thinking that this old reformation, right? Or this old legitimization of the trade, right? It's going to be one which is going, going to benefit you. And at the same time, it's taxing you before you even start. Because that's yes. basically what it amounts to. Yes, but we have to, like you said, you know, no oligarch, you know, our plantation economy, because every other agricultural product, banana, sugar cane, anything, comes through the same system where but that's different that that was no no, that no. Was i'm just coming to, no no i'm just saying it the, the 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 industries for example ganja is really an agricultural product because it's illegal the agricultural industry as to how you would invest in a product if you're bringing you know pineapple or whatever into the stream of the economy there is a framework for investment, setting up your board, setting up your infrastructure 
of how you're going to deal with exporting ginger from a local to an export crop, right? What happened with the ganja? The agricultural department, no department could touch it because it's an illegal substance. And so the normal investment that could even have come in to assist the, the even the grow, the intention of the growers, it, it, it isn't there. Everything became dependent on getting an international partner that was also linked because first it was the first set of investors came out of California as the largest state that was involved in the ganja industry in the United States. Then that was immediately taken over by Canada. Once Canada um, created a, a framework as a country to deal with the, 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 um, the cannabis industry, then they became the dominant um, investors, not only because um, of how we were setting up in Jamaica, but then supposedly the Canadian market was going to be our lead market to supply. Right? But, but, so but. I'm just saying that in, in discussing, you know, like you have different silos, we're dealing with the local market and why uh, as a multi-billion dollar market, we couldn't transition and we have to bring in another market. You know, they try to say, oh, we are just competing with small farmers and getting traditional farmers and, and so on in there. What we are competing with is the billions of dollars in the local industry. You know, how do you get that, you know, normalized? But, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. You can't, can I, you can't put yeah. the cart before the ours. You can't put the cart before the ours because what happens is if, you, if, you, if you're getting started brand new, right, you can't be looking at profit. When you're nowhere you there, of course, of course, of you're already you profitable. To... No, no, no. What I'm saying is, right? You, of course, you've got to invest, and based on your investment, right, you put your, your production cost and all of that, right? That's where your profit is gonna generate from, right? In terms of when you when you get to market, what what returns you get on your goods and so on. But what I'm looking at is where everything that is being done is being done from the standpoint of the the, 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 the the oligarchy right it's it's being done from the standpoint of of of, of, of those on top the very ones who have always you're getting a right? buzz from somebody's mic the very ones who have always held back but what one of the things that um maxi mentioned that is is key to to remember the market who are we because who are we aiming are, are, are trying towards? One of the things that did not happen and, and how we started out was us looking at an export market. So even as Maxine said, there's no conversation about a local market, so to speak. And so what you have on the ground here now is that you have two markets. You have the, 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 the licensees, but you also do have the guys that still have their, their corner shop. So that is still an active gray area. That but, is you still, but you still don't have a legal export market either. No, but you we really don't have a legal export market. The government market. wants to go for a legal export market. However, that is going to be hard when internationally you cannot export. Exactly. Border. Exactly. There is the exactly. Idea, it is as clear as day. There is no export from Jamaica to anywhere else. Exactly. Um, what happened the other day with the with the glut on the Canadian market and us us allowing um, them to use us as a dumping ground, I like to say, for their market would not ever happen in the reverse if we ever had a glut here and to send to Canada, it's not going to happen. They are going to find every reason, just as Sister Maxine said, to tell you that the, the soil type, when they tested, there was so much chemical, there's so much more than whatever. 
So, and their FDA regulations or regulations do not allow it's a for of this crap. kind of crap. So, so that conversation about what, what it, it started out like that in the initial stage of, and that was why the, the, the ganja industry was placed where it is placed under the Ministry of, of Industry and Commerce because it is seen as a product to export as an industry and commerce. And as Sister Maxine says, there's no conversation about it in agriculture. You even as a, a, a ganja farmer, you cannot get concession. There is no, you, you're not even, Rada doesn't even recognize you as unless you grow another crop alongside. Well, so, well, here's, here's the thing, Vicky and Maxine, <laughs> right? I can, I, can, I can use another example. I can use another example for build the point too. They did a similar thing with the, with the Jamaican mango years ago. They did a similar thing, right? With the Aki years ago, right? It's nothing new. None of what you see they do is anything new. And the government is complicit with it because the government is only concerned about what they can make, right? To put in their own pockets. This is not about, this is not in the interest of farmers and farmers farming something and profiteering from it. It is not about that. When it, that's what it should be about. So, well, right? They did the same thing with the mango. They did the same thing with the Aki, right? For many years, Aki couldn't even come in the US, right? And now, primarily, it comes in through the big exporters like the grace kennedys and so on and so on that's how they finally had it worked out right uh, no um, the fact of the matter is that if you're like i said if you're going to start an industry it's gonna start with the local market right it has to start with the local market because that's that's the limitation right now it is not legalized across the board where you can have normalized trade just a, a point. Um, I, I don't know it, but I'm sorry to be late. Uh, you know, my computer requires all kind of security things before I can come online. But as a, for me, who is outside of the industry, um, how I'm understanding what is being said and, and to relate it to Jamaica's development is that in every industry, regardless of which industry, bauxite, banana, sugar, you want to get as much of the value added process. So if you are only confined to growing, that's the revenue you can expect, a revenue as a grower. So whether you're selling it locally, or you're selling it overseas as a grower, it's quite different from if you manufacture it or modify it to become a medicine. And therefore you're exporting it to Canada or the United States to people who are buying medicine from you. You're going to get much more value as a in the local market if the more you go up the value added. It's just like bauxite. When we started out with bauxite, we were only exporting raw dirt. Here, we're not even able to export raw the, the dirt, the, 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 the plant, because of the legal constraints around who can grow it and so on. But technically, in the interest of looking at the future of the country, it, it is too two concerns that seem to come out in my to me one is the, the things that are preventing us from going overseas with this product and secondly the things that prevent us from getting more value added to the grassroots so a man who has just what uh is vicky uh, vicky i think is the name yes and what I understood Maxine to be saying is really this point. If I was growing 
<clears throat> Ganja in Westmoreland on beer land. And now they are looking to bring it under some kind of regulation and control. What they're doing is banning me as a grower from transforming the land that I had before into a, a means of marketing my product legally. I'm banned from doing that. Secondly, I am being opposed by bigger business, whether in the United States, well, probably in the United States, but certainly in Jamaica, from getting more value added out of it, where I cannot or is prevented from make, turning it into medicine. Because the more I, Jamaica turns it, just like the coffee, same damn thing. Yes. Right? The more I send away the raw thing, I get some money, yes. I get some dregs from the table. But if I can manufacture it, modify it, and send it, send it to a market that is buying it in its completed form, the value to me and to the country is exponent exponentially greater. And that's how I'm, I'm listening to this conversation. Now, somebody said something about the UN. I don't know if you meant US. <laughs> no, it's actually the United Nations. Yeah, what, what is that? That It's a thing that they have about... So the International Narcotic Board governs the 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 what they call drug crops of which cannabis or ganja is viewed as a drug crop and so the the un conventions 1961 71 and 1988 only allows those crops to be exported for certain under certain requirements one of those requirements is that of medicinal and where ganja is concerned, it is only in years this is not valid. You know, we lost you there. Now, Sorry, we yeah, lost you there for a minute. We, 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 we lost you for a minute. Yeah, what I'm saying is that the 1961-71 convention and 88 only allows ganja to be exported under certain strictures certain requirements such as medicinal and it is only in recent years that they have stated that ganja has any medicinal value so so because of that the plant is on a certain on a schedule and so the schedule in of the plant says that cannabis can only be used and it and it it is very specific in its, its requirement for medicinal purposes and it tells you so so well, it's not just the u.s it is a, but, and they have used that but, but here's, a, here's, here's, here's the thing vicky here's the thing about that what you just said uh, it is their nice way of saying this is how we are gonna regulate you right they don't need to tell you they don't need to tell us right that it had medicinal value we knew that before yeah but yeah but telling us anything new Right? Yeah, but they, 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 it wasn't recognized as such before. Precisely, and that's what I'm saying to you. That's their nice way of telling you, this is how we're going to regulate you. Yeah. 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 They've right? been regulating. They have been regulating. Remember, we know that. cannabis we know that. was medicinal. Cannabis before. Cannabis we know that. Medicinal. But, but here's another thing. Here's another thing to, to, to point out. <laughs> right? And, 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 and you can probably um, recall this between Max and Vicky. You remember years ago, this was back in the 70s, I think, right? There's this doctor who came up with the treatment for glaucoma. Yeah, man. Yes. And using ganja. Man, yes. right? and, and Where do you think they got that ganja from? That ganja never came from regular growers. Yeah. That yes. ganja came from, yeah. what? Well, it never come from regular growers. It did. No. It came from it came from their selected growers. 
What you mean? No, man, those I, were ganja I, that were confiscated. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, that ganja drug that, that was confiscated. Confiscated ganja they used. But it, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It never come yeah. from. It never come from people growing it and selling it to them. Them confiscate it. I use that to do to do whatever they do. Research. Doing, yeah. Right. They never. They never. They never. They never. They never, they never use that. Right to benefit. Um. The, the, the people who grow it. It's the same no. thing. It's because the, the people thing. who grow. No. But what I'm saying, when they made the cannabis, or when they did the research and got the medicinal, because it's something similar was happening in israel right where israel um israeli scientists from the same period as i got to understand because israel within their um religious concept cannabis has a you know uh openness almost cultural like ourselves but not you know equal yeah e in equal standing, especially like oh they're bombing Hamas. No, I have to be very can, careful. Can <laughs> but I what, I'm, what, what I was just trying to make the point was that the international UN laws that um, Vicky spoke about governs the world, and it governs it from the same colonial industrial framework, right? So exactly. even even us discussing the ganja industry, what is disheartening is that we are not um, investigating the the you know always oh, export market or this or that. We are not studying that we have to tap you know tip through tiptoe through the tulips if we want to get to the other side and jamaica because they're so invested in the transshipment economies we have to look at these economies right it's not like uruguay and some other places who just said listen as a country if you notice no jamaican prime minister has stepped forward like how trudeau or you know the prime minister of um uruguay stepped up as a nation and say i'm taking control of this and I'm going to monetize it on behalf of my people and take the best out of it. You and understand? I'm not going to do that. I let, understand. Let me, let me, so these are let, the discussions that we must have as, as people who are maybe have a right, you understand, to, to exercise this in, in law. Maybe the government can't, but maybe the people can. Or maybe a me. section of the people who, which is what I think they're tinkering now, with the Rastafari. You understand what I'm saying? In that Sir, Hart, let Sir, me ask this question. Comment on something that Sir Horton said about the value added. One of the things that we have going on in the industry here is that a number of persons locally have made value added products from the, the plant. However, here's the catch up for that now is that you have to have these products passed by our ministry of health and they have set up a, a, a cannabis unit in the ministry of health and the rules so this comes back to what you are saying patrick the rules that you have for those products now to get them and to even to export them to any market as value added is so stringent because you have to pass this sba this quality and so on one company in jamaica for example one cannabis company they tried to do a product for cancer treatment and pain and when the person tried to get access to the market they couldn't you know what they had to do they had to ask someone in another country to certify the product under their product in that country it's the same product made here same jamaican product from our blood but they had to circumvent the process and they label the product and say that the testing was done in this other country for the product even to be recognized as being something that we could look at so these so it is not lack of wanting to add value because outside there persons are trying to add value the other thing we have also blocked any edibles coming from the plant 
So we, we that is not even, and that is why I'm so upset about us importing sweets and edibles from California or wherever, getting in our hands of our children. Because we here in the industry, edibles is not a part of it. And the Ministry of Everybody has told us that there is no space for edibles because you can't tell the measurement, you can't do proper labeling and access and all that. Yet still these products are coming into our shores and finding their hands in the hands of our children. And, and let me tell you, and let me tell you, our industry, our economy is an import substitution economy. And when the other day someone told me that um, the cigarettes are now fully imported, you know, potentially in which I wanted to clarify in my head, because I said, I remember, you know, Carreras or whoever having a factory in Jamaica. And then they said, no, now that is no longer. This industry is now coming from outside, prepackaged and imported for sale. So one of the things that even as an activist on the indigenous rights and cultural rights and so forth, is I saw where potentially the Jamaican um, economy would rather look at Jamaica as a consuming market of ganja and map it out in a way where they are content to import. And then they, that same merchant import substitution class would then take control of the industry and they would kill out, literally kill out the, the, the um, traditional ganja industry which they themselves don't care for. You understand? And in fact, at one point when they were bringing in the hemp, that was um, potentially going to cross, you know, kill out the industry. They were willing to forego the traditional, you know, get the industry seeing, for the hemp. Is it only me? I'm not seeing, seeing anybody. I'm no, not seeing the same thing either. here. The same thing here. Oh, but I'm hearing you, so I'm. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm not I'm hearing. Hearing. But, but you understand. So yes. even this whole thing about the import and people being alarmed, they don't recognize that that is actually potentially what the powers that be are, you know, would want to have happen. But here's the thing, Maxine. All the way you just say is nothing new. And it applies across the board to everything. Not just, not just, not just ganja and all of that. I mean, right as I sit here, there's a number of products I can think of, right, with Jamaica right now. I see, I see somebody posted um, on social media just this past week, right, about coconut products, right, like coconut milk and all of that being marketed mm. in Jamaica from Thailand and all of these places, right? Now, this is... This is marketed through the very same company, Grace Kennedy, right? Who at one stage could not, America would not allow them to import um, coconut water from Jamaica, right? For, because as far as them was concerned, it, is, it, it, wasn't some, it was not a product that was tested and approved for export, right, to the US. I remember when this whole thing got started. Right. right. It but, got started from way back in the 70s. It's not just it's not just these products. You're seeing it now because we're looking at the ganja situation. But it's a number of products went through all of that. Right. right? It is well, nothing we are, new. We are we're just we agreeing with you. We are agreeing with you. Yeah. As well. But we are here now discussing a new industry that they are trying to they're you doing know, the same thing with it. That they're doing that. I mean, that is the basis of our reasoning to, to identify as people are, you know, have their expectations and, you know, investing their money and thinking that this is, you know, a problem that we're going to solve. What we're and, discussing and, and here. What to Maxine is that this industry is, is very much linked to our culture. So it's not just the product itself but the culture 
and and so you just mentioned somebody mentioned thailand and it's i'm glad you mentioned that because i've seen thailand taking ganja and have an entire village that plays bob marley has rasta colors up with ganja stores selling ganja purportedly under the cultural appropriation in terms of the jamaican culture that is being sold there and we are sitting here not realizing our value being taken from us so it's yes, it's, it's exactly. for me it's not just the product but the cultural attachment that is going elsewhere slap up a a, a, a a leaf and a ganja leaf and and black green and gold or red green and gold and say jamaica and it is sold already scrap well i i agree well you know when i say i agree you know when this thing was coming on um from the rasafire perspective the first from 2013 we wrote to the u.s high commissioner to 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 state that our intellectual property the, the level of which it is being used in um, in California, you know, it would preclude us having any um, competitive advantage um, shipping our products out of Jamaica. So we felt that we needed, um, as part of this ganja industry, a trade on the level of trade. You understand? To understand, all right, before we even start, we are already competed with in the in the um top markets of the world because of our music because of what our music has 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 done you understand so where are those variables you know we're here talking about as vicky said growing and cultivating and 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 the non-exportability of the actual plant when the cultural brand value is already a global um platform you understand that you would need to trade. And when we brought this to the government, that is one of the areas within the industry that we don't even reach tier one, is our intellectual property rights, which I argue, even for the rest of our, right, with, when they're telling you about sacramental space and all of that, I'm saying, where, about, where is the protection of the intellectual property? And when I say protection, you, you look at Mali Natural, the Bob Marley brand of ganja was first established in California, bought out by one of the top, you know, ganja um, um, companies. Companies, and they took all everything, the highest of the of our uh, of our brand value. Now Marley Natural is opened in Jamaica at the Bob Marley Museum. Well, I, I can, dare I, say I can, that I can, it is the products from California but I can, that I can, will be I can, there. I can, I can mention something to, to you too about that, which is which which would be even shocking to people is that before it was even legitimized for marketing in California, it was being sold. What do you mean? What sold Bef where? Before it was legitimized in California, in the state of California, right? For market, it was being sold. The same Marley brand and all of that. I'm saying that. You know, when 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 you hear about it hitting the market and all of that, it was already on the market. Yeah, well, I mean that might be a sub sub story to the reality, but what we are what we are framing it in is Jamaica's um, competitive advantage. No, for but its to your products point, and services yeah. to be competitive in in any of these global markets, and therefore our 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 what you call it research committee at the beginning of the business development our intellectual property should have been as high on the list you understand what i'm saying in terms of I trade agree agreements. With you. i understand what you're saying i understand what you're saying i'm just adding to what you're saying no, right yeah I agree. how much just... how much <laughs> how, how much we are way behind yes. right we are way behind the eight ball because a lot of uh, what we're talking about right is basically what's being done to us and being done to us in a so-called nice way nicely explained and all of that but it don't mean crap i, I want to yes, i want to find okay. out i want to find out 
because I'm just trying to understand the, the, the industry makeup. In terms of the licensed um, players in the Jamaican space, what the, the, who are the majority that make up that space? Is it the one acre grow, the five acre grow, the, the 10, 20 acre? What, what is that makeup like? Based on the statistics coming out of the CLA, the the the, the majority are one one acre um, and above ab and two acres, but the two acres and um, it's not and 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 don't look at it though by acreage, because what has happened is that you have it's it's like testing the waters, so the the persons with the resources. Because remember, you have to fence an acre and put up camera all around. So persons with the resources who can have entered, they are not necessarily your small traditional farmers. These are persons who would have been established business persons who can afford to. And in some cases, former commissioners and, 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 and persons who would have been in the in the in former life uh burning these crops so so you what i want is so don't look at it as all right these are small farmers they are in one acre persons have been testing to see how far no what has happened i told you when we, when the industry started canada canadians u.s persons came in but not having this the sales materialized as they would and having still getting the competition from the gray market from the, the the small farmers that those persons have literally pulled out and so you are finding now one and two persons who can maintain themselves staying in the market space so while there are a lot of them are one acre they are still one acre with certain kind of strictures and and certain characteristics that you will have to take note of the other thing too that's laughable is that jamaica seems to have a, an ability or a law that allows for the growing of psychedelic mushrooms so all of a sudden, <laughs> the psychedelic mushroom people are buying out the existing ganja company infrastructure. <laughs> Let me pause right? here, Sister Maxine. Let, there is no law. What happened with the psychedelic mushroom is that it wasn't being it it, it, it came in the space. It wasn't being regulated or anything, and it caught on. It is no so what you find in a lot of dispensaries you have the you have the psychedelic mushroom and so now the authorities are in a panic because there is no there, oh my god we have to regulate this so the regulations are now being thought about and and crafted <laughs> so it, it and 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 i speak from sitting at at, 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 at the, I must declare, I also sit on the National Council of Drug Abuse. So I actually hear these, these, these conversations with people telling you, oh my God, we have to stop this because our young people are now getting... So it's now realizing that... Don't be, oh, surprised. Don't be surprised if they come with new things too. Like two exactly. men and all kinds of things. Exactly. So right. it is. It, it, there's no regulation about it. There's nothing. It's no us now realizing that oh it's a thing that persons are now sister maxine coming to say oh this needs to be regulated so which is why you have the the, this, the mushrooms and the chocolates being sold in the dispensaries and in by cannabis growers who have decided that cannabis is not it's not going the way we thought it would be so they are now diversifying so to speak their product line but do you do recognize vicky that the largest um cannabis company which i would say are the most successful one kaya has been bought out by a mushroom company 
Yes, yes, most, most, okay. most of them. Yes. <laughs> With, with everything that's, that's going on, what can the government do to enhance the industry? Is it get out of the way? No, I didn't hear that. <laughs> you asked me what yes, can the government yes, do. I, I think I think what Maxine means, which I'm in total agreement with, is that the government is more part of the problem, not part of the solution. All right, so, so one of the things that I've heard them do, and I don't know, I'm watching this to see if it's political because we're in the political climate why the argument is made by that. But this, and Maxine, we would have spoken about this some time ago, is to say that if we're really building an industry, we cannot build this industry under the Dangerous Drugs Act. It's, it has to be pulled out. And just like, oh, you have... I think somebody mentioned coconut. Okay. We have to we have to have a we have a coffee industry board and, and regulations. We have to pull it out of the dangerous drugs act and treat it as a real industry that we want to be. We have to give it the same amount of facility in terms of agricultural extension that we would give any other crop. And we have to not treat it as a drug crop. Do we have the willpower to do so? I am not certain because one minister is, is on one and is saying she's going to do that and view it as, as, as culture and pull it out and ask for and lobby for the, the, the cannabis industry act. While I'm hearing another minister in the same administration saying, oh, but we have the international laws that we signed to and we have to be careful of the treaty. So you are hearing two different stories and you don't know where. So in order to facilitate it, there needs to be meaningful conversation and really meaningful growth. Additionally, there has to be a, recognize, a recognition of the local industry. We keep talking about export, export. And I often say to persons, Aki is popular abroad, Red Stripe is popular abroad, uh, breadfruit is popular abroad all because of the local footprint that they have. If Jamaican people never love and talk about Aki and, and deal with Aki and Red Stripe, it would not have a brand value in, in the world. And so that is what cannabis have. But we don't okay. treat it as such and we don't build a local industry. But in, in 2018, when I was done on the island, I spent... Uh, you know, March and then again, November. And you had some Americans visiting and they had bought, invested into, I believe it's the Walker Wood. Um, right. Sauce factory. Mm -hmm. And there were modif modifications being done to the factory to produce marijuana lace uh, type products. Whatever happened to that, and is that has gotten that gotten out in the market it has not because we do not uh, we do not uh, allow edibles and workers would would fall within the edibles arena well uh, worse than that me. let me tell you worse than that when this ganja thing start this industrial conversation i was shocked when i um when it was um, what is being presented within the nutraceutical platform because the nutraceutical platform as an industry, which is another billion dollar industry, had been hampered for so many decades, apparently, to be for Jamaican normal herbs, not ganja, just our normal, um, you know, medicinal herbs to be invested in um, to enter that market. So the, the, the nutraceutical market actually was looking at the ganja as a, um, as a spark to, pot to potentially now get this industry off the ground, which is, like I said, I think Jamaica has some of the most um, the highest variety of um medicinal plants right 
So when I, you know, I'm there thinking to myself, said, boy, you know, these people that are in charge of industry and commerce and governance, you understand? They really are, you know, if they have done this to the medicinal herbs, what are they going to do to the ganja? You understand what I'm saying? But so, the biggest sign of failure for this, you know, how many of us here remember, you mentioned being here in 2018, you remember Eden Garden and Dr. Henry Lowe? That company has folded under. That's that's the biggest sign. And he was one of the Jamaicans that was invested in, in ganja and products and other other herbs and spices. With, and, and he folded under. Okay. He came here to Washington in 20. 18 and he was looking at a contract with howard university to use the ganja uh, you know he, he was claiming 13 cures for cancer and when mm -hmm. he showed up here we entertained him in at our june caribbean american month of fear and you know i was talking to him but he was pretty confident that howard would have accepted the um the the research and he would have had successful marketing but, but whatever happened i think there the, uh, the the thing too you know is that in the medicinal market and the pharmaceutical to get a product um a patent for the this is different from nutraceuticals like lotions and you know um these type of rubs for pain and so forth but for the pharmaceutical it takes between 15 to sometimes 20 years to get you know that final um patent to enter but, but so but, uh, but the thing i want to make clear the recreational market globally right is two or three times larger than the medicinal and our pharmaceutical right so mm. the reality is that regardless of this medicinal um framework we are a recreational co country majoritively right and so our business would definitively yes speak to medicinal as value added but the base of your industry is going to be recreational so well, because yeah. the recreational has not been legalized because of our transshipment issues and potentially other issues that political and who owns what right that is why we are mostly hampered because our 11 billion dollar recreational market cannot be absorbed by the medicinal which is legal and everything but its framework is is of a different kind and trust me the medicinal market, when you look in California, um, Canada, and you look at what percentage of profit is being made in these industries, it is from the recreational. You understand? So but here's, the thing, here's the thing with that, Maxine, mm -hmm. right? Again, that's another thing. I Again, key point in your, your, your race, because that's another thing, again, we are with all of what they're talking about it's been happening most people will come out jamaica come out jamaica for smoke some weed but most of the medicinal dispensaries are quasi recreational but they, 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 they're not making any money from no medicinal product they put Be, some because, because they're, not going, into, some they're not going into the dispensary for get them get them weed they just want is. some weed where it come from <laughs> It no, is but what I'm, go ahead go it ahead. is the same everywhere it's like this medicinal label is just a, a means probably a of, keep, of keeping out some people 
on the international scene because here in here in 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 toronto on every corner there is a so-called medicinal a marijuana. <laughs> yeah and it's a recreational people and nobody has any yeah. that is why that is why i need. that is why i laugh after the sacramental you, know? you understand what I'm saying? Because they say the sacramental, you can't sell. You have to exchange it and all kind of things. And I'm saying, well, give the rest of our right the medicinal licenses for them to open their dispensaries and do what like everybody else is doing. But well, Maxine, you're you supposed to can collect a contribution to the sacramental. No, what I'm saying, when the Catholic them sell them sacramental wine, under prohibition, they were the only ones who could sell. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So the Rastafari mm, representation that we have made, you have differences of opinions within the Rastafari. You understand? Because there are those who seem to think that Jamaica, you know, the 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 the, the um the obstacles that we have identified. That somehow, you understand, <laughs> it's gonna but, but, bow to them. But, but I'm me, telling you. Let me let me we, let me let me bring up another thing to Maxine, which 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 is which is um something very important and um for us to consider, right? And especially because as as we all know, right, with Ganja, it came out of India first, right, in terms of coming to Jamaica. And the Indian, the Indian medicinal industry, right, um, is mostly under the their medicinal modality, which you refer to as Ayurvedic. Are you right? are you ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a lot of herbs which is not as popularly known, right, in various mm -hmm. parts of the world and so on. Right, and of course, in order for them, they, they, they claim a lot of medicinal value to them, right? And despite them not being approved, right, because they have not come under um, research from the various universities and, 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 and gotten their approval, right? They still find ways to import these herbs into the US legitimately I sell them legitimately in regular stores legitimately right the same thing could be done with the same thing could be done with the weed so so that now brings Patrick another conversation that has been happening on the ground here the the neutropathic uh nutraceutical medicine and medical practitioners because they too have said all right, I'm a naturopath. I, I, I use different herbs for my uh, treating my patients and so on. And as you said, like the Indians who are able to export their herbs is legitimately, that's a legitimate claim. The challenge that we have within not just Jamaica, but the Caribbean and, and, and to, to a lot of extent to Latin America, because we have a grouping of us looking at this is that we in this part of the world have not recognized those persons. So you have persons like uh, Errol Grant and, and, and uh, Basil who are practitioners, who are, are but because they are telling you, show us clinical trials. They need to show clinical trials and reports on their patient care and all of that. Now, we are coming up on a culture, as you said, like the Indians who are your herbs and spices, you get a headache, there's a bush, there's fever grass, there's medina, there's so many herbs that we would use traditionally, and these are legitimate herbs, but we have not recognized that. So that is part of the tension that comes across also with the ganja. Because and, that, and that goes to the point, Maxine's point, in terms of the government standing in the way. They're being part of the problem rather than being part of the solution. Because these are the things that they need to work on. These are the things exactly. that they need to pull up. You, 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 I, I think part of the problem, too, that we're probably not touching on is that the way international capitalism works is that it tries to strip 
all of these cultural and all these things that we are talking about international capitalism see a product as a product that can be sold in the marketplace and so they try to strip it of the cultural significance and all of those things and if we have a government that is compliant and we have a ministry of culture that is not pushing back on these perspectives that capitalism is pushing in the marketplace when it comes to ganja the, the situation will never change if we ju just like how they can push tourism right and push backside and push all these other things that them have interest in that them can sold as any product on a shelf i mean if they are interested and see the, the the real significance in terms of earnings and benefit to the country of the, the ganja market i mean they would push back on these um capitalist outlook that is trying to take away the cultural and the religious and all those kind of significance that that is part of the branding of what we have in the marketplace as as maxine often allude to that these people try to remove the jamaican branding right and the cultural branding and all of these things only they'll only um emphasize these things only if they think it will benefit them to have a foothold in the marketplace right and right now they believe that they can push their own products in their own countries right and minimize the jamaican brand in terms of marijuana and i don't see that we have a strong lobby in coming from jamaica you know to push back at these forces in, in, in fact, you know, it, it is actually, it's not even to push back against them because a lot of these, our influence is because of people that like what we offer. And you spoke about Grace Kennedy. When I'm, I'm in New York at the present, and when I go into the supermarket and see the Grace Kennedy products, they are coming from China or they are coming from Philippines or, they, you know, but they're carrying the Grace Kennedy brand. That ought to show you that the brand is more valuable than the product, especially in globalization, where products are going to come um, from anywhere that is suitable. But the consumer wants the brand. You understand? And you try to make the products coming from anywhere seem like your product meaning it has like starbucks wherever you go in the world and you go to a starbucks or a kentucky chicken or whatever you do get the essence you know i don't say that they ship everything from one place but you do you're able to um manage your value and and kentucky or whatever these are are still owned by the originators you understand but, what i'm saying and but, but, but that type of thinking but what's happening now maxine mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. you have it seems like in the ganja industry what you have is that there are people abroad who recognize the value of the jamaican brand but they yes. realize that there's a because of either government inaction or the, the, the industry not being developed enough they want to use the brand in their countries for their own benefit and but, then the but, jamaican yeah. industry gets no benefit from it because yeah, as it, you mentioned as someone mentioned like in california they would have a bob marley picture attached to something or some jamaican col rastafari colors attached to some so, something they have their over brand. There, mm -hmm. to their brand and selling it as and people recognize it and get attached to it with the sentiments that it is some exactly. connection to Jamaica. And exactly. they realize that there's a loophole either in how the Jamaicans are defending their brand, right, in the mm -hmm. international space, and they can get away with it. Unlike the situation with the, the Grace Kennedy that you would see in the Toronto marketplace, and, 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 and they're getting benefit from it. 
But exactly. again, again, the other point is that branding, branding is not an obstacle, you know. Branding is something you build. So anybody can build a brand, right? As long as they do it right in a way that, that allows the brand to really become um, you know, regularly known. You know, I mean Grace Kennedy wasn't always where it was. I remember the days, you know, my back in my earlier days when um when Grace Kennedy was just trying to get a foothold right in the American market. Right? And it's the Jamaicans. Yeah. Remember, it's yeah. we who I mean, live it, abroad, you know. As far as I know, Grace Kennedy is still Jamaican. No, right? no, I'm just saying we are the ones who popularize yes, the exactly. Jamaican. Mine. Exactly. You know, we because are the it, advertising. It, could only, it could only be sold. It could only be sold in the in the little Jamaican um the little store them, the little corner store them where was selling right goods from Jamaica and all of that. But, right. right because so when you go you, when you go into the supermarkets now you know you have um specialized project products from latin america yeah you have special um coexisting with the american brands mm -hmm. you understand mm -hmm. based on the demographics surrounding the the areas where these products goods and products are being sold but the point is that we are you know we are we are so um behind in our inter intellectual property understanding because we would know that for example we had the same issue with jamaican ginger you yes, understand what i'm saying yes yes, yes the same yes, exact issue yes but you right? had obstacle hmm? but, but obstacle. i want to tell you something too. There, there, there's 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 something else which i would really like to say but i don't want to say it on here in terms <laughs> of how we you could get that into the U.S. market legitimately. Can yes, I say probably, probably that's what I want. to say, say is probably something? what you're touching on, Patrick. Just let me finish this, Mikey, please. Yeah, go ahead. Um, go ahead. The, the obstacle, as I heard, um, Vicky was saying, is that you can't export the, 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 the edibles and so forth. So most of our products get, that got known in the international space, like in the Canada and in the U.S was that the Jamaicans could take these products into the, the, the diaspora. When you have a situation where, where the, the Jamaican coming on vacation and going back home can't take the ganja product from <laughs> Jamaica. But they used to, they have the, done it. That's why we're <laughs> that's what, that's what yes, we're so rich. But, but the, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the new, yeah, but, but, in but the new a... dispensation, in the new dispensation now, right? <laughs> That that is like gonna be a strike against the ganja industry yeah. that yeah. that is just developing. It's yeah, not but... like it's not like we doing this with things that were established and you know it can, was not so detrimental. I can I say something? I I, I listened to the conversation, mm -hmm. and it's very sad. Honestly, it's very sad because. Babylon, Babylon always find a way to divide and rule us, you know. And I think that is, at the, that is at the root of this problem, the ganja thing. Because even the Rastafari community, there's not a unified stand when it comes to this product. And, yes. and in, in addition to that, you have folks like Bobsy Grange who is determined determined to exercise control over this industry you know I, I read a thing from her last week where she's making move to amend the present regulations you know how that go but i really think that part of the problem in terms of the ganja industry i find the leaders them focus on the medicinal ganja but nobody not talk about clothes and other industries. Yeah, that we can develop at Jamaica. Because when you go to California, you know, you see gan ganja fabric, <laughs> pants, all sorts of things. Why can't we why can't we focus on the industry rather than talking about medicinal? Because people are talking about work, you know. People need work, jobs. Mm -hmm. Where can we, we mobilize the resource to start in those, a clothing making factory in Clarendon? Another mm -hmm. thing with this campaign, you see, I really think it is a bit short sighted for us 
who are advocating in this regard. Short sighted in the sense that we need to recognize the role of the Indian community. That has to be an important part of the discussion around Ganja in Jamaica. You know, and how can we leverage that? by going to the Indian community overseas and say, listen, deep based on historical ties, cultural and what have you, <laughs> how can we partnership and develop this thing? Because the Indians introduced ganja into Jamaica. Yeah. We have that foundation. Well, Why not use well, it and leverage? The, yeah, go ahead. Now, I was about to say we had brought up Thailand. And because of the Indian um, influence, Thailand also calls its um, its um, Ganja Ganja. They are not taking away our name Ganja. Their natural um, name for it, because of the Indian influence, you know, because the Indian influence wasn't just in Jamaica. It no. was in, um, in, in South Africa. It's exists. huge. Yep. Wherever they went, you know, even though we are, slavery, realizing, we are realizing yeah. that Africa, um, especially certain countries, had the same thousand years um, relationship yeah. with the with the um, herb, but in slavery, based on the conditions of slavery, it could not be carried over. So the reason the Indians have this um, influence is they came in as indentured servants right? yes and so in, 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 right in in indentureship you carried you know yeah you were able to carry more aspects of your culture than you did on the slavery so we we still have a uh uh what do you call it especially because we 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 have a bilateral agreement with south africa who you know, have almost the same historical conditions in relation to the ganja as we do. And we really drop the ball again with that because South Africa and Jamaica should be twinned in all aspects, in, in um, lobbying, but more so in trade. And South Africa is huge in the hemp market as you mentioned, clothing, that's why I brought, I'm bringing it up. And we actually did, uh, under the bilateral, we did a, a trade agreement because this com company that I'm associated with, Rasta Ganja Global, is actually also registered in South Africa with the idea that Jamaica and South Africa would have been, you know, partners in trading a lot of the um, nutraceuticals, we'd be trading around the, 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 the hemp industry because, you know, Jamaica still has a small area, you know, in terms of potential acreage. You understand? But you could have partnered. I mean, the, 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 the platform is there for us to partner with South Africa and even other major countries like Ghana. Ghana has another, you know, deep, Ganja cultural market as well. You understand? So, I listen to you, Maxine. I listen to you, Maxine, but I'm constantly reminded of the fact that the people who suffer because of this plant, in no way they stand to benefit. The people who persecute. Well, you know, well, as you say, one, as you say you're, that, as you say that, that, you're listen, that, you're that thing listen, to my in America, plan. just one thing before you go on, Patrick. In America, it is in, because of the African-American lobby and the, the, the power financially of their artists like Jay-Z, etc. In here, there are laws attached to the developing industry in America that says there has to be reparation given in terms of licenses, and in terms of investment into these communities to make them be more compliant. That now and, going to Jamaica. Bob's in now going no, no, I'm just telling you that there's a recognition okay. for reparation in relation to how, you know, 
people of color have been um, abused over the process. So it's still happening here. The, the, in America, the, the industry is dominated by white capitalists. You understand? I know. Um, I know, but I, I know, I know. But there's... Initially, I should state, though, initially, when the law was made, it was claimed that part of the, the requirement was that 51% of the licensee, any company, or so must be locally owned. Um, has that what? Uh, has that happened and has that been maintained? Uh, the jury no. Is, 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 no, because immediately they gave another law okay. that if you were a foreigner and you were in Jamaica for three resident years for or something like for, that, for four years, you could qualify. Resident for I think four years. So what you found that a number of Canadians stayed here for four years they just went up visited their family for about a month and came back and stayed here and, and claimed to be resident ordinary resident in jamaica and, uh, are we are, are we telling the jamaican people about this where's the news about them this this sort of behavior you see the point i'm getting at is that for this thing to for, for the industry to get off the ground it's going to take massive mobilization sensitization yes. You know, you have to bring the Jamaican people on board. And where the things set up right now, uptown people at them around shit in Jamaica when it comes to the industry. Right. So one of the things, I'm, I'm sorry Rupert isn't here today. <laughs> but one of the, the um, objectives or one of the outcomes that we'd like to see happen is to engage our diaspora. You understand as um educate them and mobilize the diaspora and friends of jamaica you understand on education or investment well because that's I, what i'm saying I, I educate, that... educate to give for them to give uh to fund to fund the um because what i've seen in jamaica is our advocacy we are passionate but there's no economy to support the passion. You understand? Um, so we have a gang of those and producers so association. Why do the legal, huh? thing? Do the legal thing now? A man say a man up here is a smuggler. And he wanna get the money at Jamaica. He could him, him start something down them can say down the money. In terms um, of the industry. Cause those are questions people are gonna ask, you know, about you know, all the all no, no, what I'm saying, you have start. no no no. No, I'm not talking, and then I'm not talking about the smugglers. Okay. I'm talking about the ordinary, um, passionate Jamaicans like yourselves. I don't think anybody here is a smuggler, but um, <laughs> well, nobody <laughs> walks, <laughs> nobody walks around with a sign saying I'm a smuggler. So, so let's no, not go there. Listen, not only that, but you understand here's, here's, what I'm saying, though. I Here's, here's, here's the thing about like it. Like TJ. Here's, here's the thing about it. <laughs> right? There's a tendency, um, and I'll just put it that way, right? Because it is more than just a tendency. It is actually what has become our 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 legacy, right? Our, 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 our legacy, which sometimes people tend to think that it is us naturally, but it's not us naturally. It's really the legacy we carry. We, we carry a legacy from colonialism, right? As I said earlier on, where we walk behind the master, right? Where we think that the things to, to, to do, to do, us. no, hold on, hold on, just hear me out. To do something right means that we have to listen to him. To be educated means that the education comes from him. To, 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 um, to move along, to be independent means that he must be the one giving us our constitution, right? That's not how it is. That's not how mm. it is. Right? It's not supposed to be that way. What, right? What we are supposed people? to determine what we need to do in our best interest. Right? right it so is you have about to organize and it is about self-determination. Right? Mm -hmm. And for that for that matter, what it means is that if we're looking at building an industry, then we have to look at it creatively. How do we go about building an industry creatively? Right? What are the obstacles? 
right? How do we overcome these obstacles, right? How do we work through, you know, the, 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 um, the necessary requirements, right? These are the things that we have to look at. We have to look at it and look at it in a pragmatic way, right? This, it's not something which we just up and do or something which we do simply because we're looking for support from one place or another, right? It is something which we have to come together, right, and do in a constructive way, right? Because so what, what, has, what has been happening is, and, and, and Michael speak That's to that point, That's right? Michael, Michael mentioned the point about Babsy Grange, right? I mean, I'm actually calling him, so I can call the name, right? He mentioned about Babsy Grange standing in, in, in the way, right? And of course, we talked about earlier, right, how much the government is more part of the problem than they are part of the solution, <laughs> right? Which is primarily wrong from the jump. Right, because we cannot. There's certain things that we'll not be able to do if the government continue to be an obstacle. Yeah, but right? P Patrick, I think I I agree that the government is an obstacle, right? But I think I, I want to say part, I want to qualify. Part of the, right part the, of the reason, part of the reason why I think the government is not moving is because. The, 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 the groundswell for, 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 for put fire under the government, I don't think it is there. I mean, before the, the, the ganja, um, not legalization, but um, before... Legalization. Yes, before that, what happened? You had a lot of Rastaman saying all kind of things. You had a lot of ganja smokers saying all kind of things. Know that this thing is in train, and the ganja industry is 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 is, is kind of is developing. Where are those voices? Where are the voices for you to call for legalization of ganja and this big talk and big whatever? We need all of those voices. We can't just let let the government off of the hook, right? The, the fact is, Patrick raised the thing about the same thing happened with hockey and all of those things. Yes, but the government stepped in and there was dialogue between the American government and the Jamaican government and the scientific community and so forth. We need that kind of lobby. The government owe it to the Jamaican people who are involved in the industry for that kind of lobby. The, the industry players should not be there on their own because this is a recipe for the international community to ignore them. Right? Because if they know that you have a government that is not supporting your, your, your protests, they have this tendency to ignore you, right? Put you in a little corner, in a little box, and say, well, we can do this and do that. While on the other but, hand... But, but I, think, I, I think we're going past that stage. I think we're going to say, it is already established that certain things are going to happen. You know, you can have certain amount of ganja, you can have certain amount of this and what have you. You have certain things already in place. The problem, which I think the advocates face, is how to unite the supporters behind this initiative. And I'm saying that the supporters allow themselves to be manipulated by folks like elements like Bobsy Grange and others. While the money keep the Rastafari community divided, because they know if the Rastaf if they are Rastafari community is allowed to be united, then you know this industry is going to take off. Look, Bob's Bob's Grange post some pictures today on the on Facebook about an exhibition or a conference, and it's like seventy three photographs, and when you go through it. One, I, I do not see Vicky face as an advocate of the industry. I do not see Maxine. What I see is they have one elder Rasta man playing drums and he's selling some stuff. And then you have a bunch of business people, some of them with dreadlocks and what have you. And that is what is happening. Just find someone on a token, put it up front, and stamp it and say, yes, we're doing something good. You know, Eddie Siaga used to do the very same thing in West Kingston. 
Somebody dead? We just organize a group of people to just come and march behind a drum and them are that showing solidarity with the dead and them will bury the, the dead down at mere pen. The advocates have to find a way that unite the, the, their supporters for this industry to take off. Because a lot of fighting. Some people don't want to talk to Maxine, some people don't want to talk to Vicky, some people say it's because this way, go that way and this way go on. You know, it's, it's, it's messy, man. I know some players involved, man. It's messy. People complaining that oh, man, it takes too much out of them to bring man and man together, man and sister together, to agree to a plan. And why that happen? The Kenyan just a walk come right in. I don't see how there's such a difficulty when the music there seems to be bro the, the music the, the music bro. give me a chance bro. Mikey the music and the, the, the music and the, 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 the herb has gone along together for, for so long. Bridget. Why is it it seems like the, 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 the herb is on one side and the music is, is going along on another side? Where's the, answer, where's the unity that. between where, where's the unity between the, the, the where's the partnership the, between the music and the and the herb you know in the Mali time in the wheelers time and and, and so where's that unity for pushing hard said, against right, against me, the status quo let me answer you by saying this in the 1970s a bridge by the name of Nikki Thomas Patrick, you probably know him. He's a real road. He meet the British chart. Nicky Thomas with really night in Georgia. And after he hit the British chart, Virgin and a lot of British labels start coming out of the house, come sign people, left, right, and center. Overnight, every man grew dreadlocks. Because... That's about Sagana. <laughs> yeah, every man grew dreadlocks. Because Virgin tell them said that's that is the look that they want. You understand? The Master Ghana had that same impact globally. You understand me? So it's not said the news can the, the, the herb you not know, tied together, but you don't have a unity behind that. None of them. And that is what is missing. Well, I can tell you that the music is also owned by the capitalists. Yes, okay. I can right. sing about whatever, but at the level of trade and commerce and distribution, they control our, it. The amount, they control it. So it's same thing, same thing. I, I, my mind came to remittances, which again I'm here on a diaspora platform, so I am mindful, having been in Jamaica on the ground. You know, and seeing, you know, the willingness of the ones in Jamaica to advocate, but they have no resources. Exactly. So when you ask about the Rastafari, for example, I spent years in an organizational platform amongst a poor, poor, poor community. That if you call a meeting, you better be prepared to also give the bus fare to come to the meeting, the food, the this, the that, right? So I saw where this whole disunity, divide and all of that, the greatest factor was poverty, right? And even yeah. on the political level, any mass meeting is organized. There's resources, yes. right? Yeah. And so, I am mindful that ones want to do the right thing. But your faith and your commitment is highly challenged. You can have a meeting, everything is good, everything is understood. Once you leave the meeting, sometimes people don't even have credit to call. Sometimes, you know, COVID helped us a lot because it brought forward this platform Maxine. of zoom and and oh. so on i'm just i'm just giving you I'm, I'm asking you how can we in the diaspora help to strengthen this movement that's a question what role think, can we play i think we need to develop a fund 
um, along the, the idea of remittance because the, the act of remitting is such a major economic um, reality for not just for Jamaicans but for a lot of countries. It's the people in the diaspora who are um, upholding, you understand, the basic rights of their families and communities. Um, well, I'm speaking of Jamaica. You understand? So, you know, I it, it's just a matter of developing the proper narrative, both not just even for an advocacy, but even a fund that would eventually be, be an investment fund into the um, proper um, principles that should, you know, govern the industry. Because even if Vicky and I have um, ideas, we need lawyers yeah. at the level of the, 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 the government and policy to carry these ideas forward and defend them. That and, they and make it onto the paper. Let me also add to what Maxine is saying, because you asked a very good question. How can we? One of the things that we have been doing as advocates is to be engaged into conversations and debates that happen um, not just at the local level, but at the regional and international level. So, for example, there is, is now, and, and, and Maxine mentioned Uruguay earlier, but there is also Bolivia and other countries who are challenging the UN conventions as it relates to uh, cultural use of, of, of plants that they view as job crop plants and crops. And they, are, they have challenged it on the fact that, for example, Bolivia came out of the convention um, and, uh, as it relates to coca plant because of their cultural use and their traditional persons using it. And we have, have said, but it's a similar for us in terms of, of ganja and the plant and our Rastafari community, Maroon community, and other Indian communities and so on. But to get to some of these conversations and go into some of these debates, um, we have to depend on funding, Patrick, from Mr. Mann, from the guys in Europe. So, so again, you want to go to these conversations. If you are not at the table, you are on the table as dinner. So we want to be at the table, but to be at the table, it costs. So for example, we, we, we were able to have some funding representations from uh, St. Catherine and from uh, a compound in St. Elizabeth at a, at a regional debate, looking at the convention that deals with economic, social, and cultural rights under which we have said, listen, you are telling us about INCB and convention signed for about the jobs, but you're not looking at the conventions that you would have signed about our cultural rights and our rights to recognize certain standing. And so having funding to go to these conversations and having funding to hold press conference, because you'd be surprised media don't go to where where they don't feel that it is valuable and it's worth their while and so some of the, the strengths that and support from the from 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 the diaspora as maxine says is to help us to get to these tables help us to get to these conventions help us to have these con um conversations and help us to find the legal help to challenge when our rights are being, being trampled on and to challenge these regulations that they come. So for example, St. Kitts and the Nevis had a change to their cannabis law because the Rastaman there challenged the, the constitutionality of him having the ability to use ganja. And so that was how St. Kitts law was 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 be, is being amended. Now do we so have resources here? And, and, and that's the other argument about Rastafari unity and so forth, which I, just based on what Vicky just said, similarly, the law in South Africa was um, changed by a, a Rastafari lawyer who challenged the constitution 
So it don't need no unity or no bring 50 million people together or whatever. From you have a case on behalf of your cultural right and you carry that to the Supreme Court. You understand? That is something that they have been blocking the Rastafari in Jamaica from challenging the law, thinking that, oh, we have to go get something from the old mansions and get, you only have to have the facts and you bring it before the court as an individual. You understand? And and, and it is verified. The law has changed. I've, it, it totally changed the laws in, in, in South Africa. One Rastafari lawyer went to so why, change. Why hasn't this happened in Jamaica? What is preventing this from happening? Well, I think we haven't had... Well, you have a lot of Rasta law here. You have Miguel Lorne, you have... Isaac Buchanan, you have a lot of Rasta lawyers down there. What's they the come I, with I, fees, I, you know. These lawyers come with fees. Remember, remember, no, they no, didn't they, move for this bar, um, Miguel, you know. Yeah, there's a. No, he's practicing again. He's, he's not he's practicing, practicing again. again. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's he, he's, he has back his license. Yeah, okay. but, but, but let's get to want... let us get to something that Herb is. Red Herb, you said something about the diaspora. You were saying something. To continue what Maxine is saying. Muted. He's muted. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Okay. I posted something here that the Jamaican and Caribbean people can help develop the market, right? by investing in emerging legal medicinal cannabis markets in the region, especially in Jamaica. It also says Jamaica has positioned itself at the forefront of cannabis law reform in the developing world. Foreign investment can provide... What, what are you reading from? What, what, what are you reading from, Herb? Something like that I have produced. It's, it's in, look in the private chat. Everybody yes. can see no, I can't see the chat. The private chat? Is, it should be to your oh, down. Oh, to when your you're in left. full... Uh, that's why I didn't see it. Yeah, but it's... Okay, it's, it's, okay. It's I was in full screen it. mode. That's why I didn't see it. What, yeah, I'm seeing okay. it. Okay. I'm seeing it now. Mm -hmm. See? B because you need... Uh, it, yeah, go ahead. Everything I'm hearing is like we, we're not fully or properly organized. Right? we don't have links to each other we're not talking to each other be, be, about what our needs are for instance we're talking to jamaica and jamaica talking back to us about fighting corruption and we're organizing around that and we're getting the one jamaica legal defense foundation in position to do that but we also have other things we can do which would be similar to what we're talking about here is organizing around um, getting the uh, foreign investment provided for to get the capital, technical knowledge and quality assurance. Everything that they throw at you, all the regulations they're throwing out there saying, oh, you got to meet this standard and that standard. It's all hurdles. And if you have the money, you can get over the hurdles. That's the bottom line, yeah. right? But there are people in the diaspora that have lots of money. Some that made the money off the old time ganja trade, right? Maybe it's time to talk to those people as well and say, hey, you know, let's bring everything up to, to modern, a modernized state to where your kids can enjoy your money because if they say your money is dirty and they don't want you involved, then you know invest it in your kids at least, and then let's let's get. Uh, I think I think the question. Out. I think the question Vicky, Vicky and Maxine is asking is, what's the first step? The, the I think first that's step. The question they're asking you, Herb. We to, hear that. To talk, so what's the next step? What's the next step? All right, so you have to, the different implement what you're suggesting. Look, the Northeast diaspora is on Tuesday night. They're having a conference and they're talking about good governance. If you want to appear on that, let me know and I'll introduce it.
to Michelle this evening. Because good governance also means what are you doing about the diaspora and the needs of the diaspora? Or what can the diaspora do for the people of Jamaica? Right? This is where you, the kind of forum you want to introduce that. Right. But also, I, go ahead. But give, them, give her a specific plan, Mickey, something that needs to happen. Well, what I would add is that if you recognize that, for example, in New York, we are entering a legalized um, market here, you know? Yeah. They're beginning yeah. to. So if, if you recognize that a lot of the Jamaican products are here, patty, jerk, you understand that have developed businesses from the diaspora base, you'd also recognize that you should be in the diaspora in terms of assisting, also be framing a Jamaica-based um, entity. You understand what I'm saying? That will right. match and or positively um, appropriate because you're going to be giving back you understand to the source yep. so if you have a jamaica based ganja um cultural company arising out of new york or the markets that it has legalized i see for example jacana which is a jamaican based company in a promotion this week here they're not promoting ganja but they are promoting herb based wellness products and services therefore mm -hmm. getting the jacana brand amongst the people you understand and potentially opening a jacana yeah. store that then upon you understand okay um yep. maxine, you. maxine if, what about you trying to get some of that information to us yes well i'm i've been adopted you know michael don't tell you yeah, but I mean, I, st I still want the information. I, I hear you just announced, but I wasn't even expecting it, so I couldn't write anything I, I, down I, or whatever. I, I, I want to forward on that, you know. I think Vicky and, and, I and Vicky too? Maxine should, should mm -hmm. link up because, no, seriously, you know, the, we have to resist, you know, and the way to resist is having access to information. Or maybe you have some connection in terms of getting yeah, there. Yeah, I'm room. definitely going to talk to you further upon that term in terms of um that meeting coming up. Yeah, but, if you can get them yeah, as a to yeah, make yeah, a presentation, well, yeah. that would be good. We can have a we can have a discussion over. Yeah, because I agree with Maxine the diaspora as a role to play. That way you just right mentioned now, though, Maxine. I definitely would have liked if you um get me some information on that. So let me I guess I can put Oh, go now. Put my information in the chat so you can yes. email it to me or something. Yes. And Vicky, you should give your information to her because you can get you yeah. on that thing. Because that's so that's the way it has to be done, you know. You know, one 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 coco, you know. Because it's I tell you, we, yeah. you see, in Jamaica around this industry, there's two individuals that you have to recognize right the politics of what you're doing first bob's Grinch, and another person who you have to recognize in this hierarchy of cooks is barbara anna blake she, <laughs> she's she's but you know and those those folks you know they're not going to just roll over and play dead this is something that they take they're very passionate about and they see money you know, and they're going to do everything to stifle that which they can control. Mm. <laughs> That's my little bit. I want anybody have anything to say because it's now two hours we've been at this. I think we have got, you know, you want closing remarks. <laughs> well, let me hear from you. Your yeah, my information remarks. is in the chat okay yeah we go around the room the, the room around the table the closing remarks 
start with Patrick. Well, I think this was this was a good discussion, and and um, there's a lot of information coming out of this, and I see this as a, a, a um a positive move for really um you know start making some inroads as to how we can really resolve this whole thing and you know really get an, a, a more productive footing you know but um definitely this was a very good discussion in my view last yeah man i first i want to say i appreciate um the presence of vicky you know, now I won't talk about Maxine. She's one of us now. So, <laughs> <She's> <laughs> <a doctor. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I mean, it is important. I think the industry, you know, is is important to Jamaica, and it is important that we try and defend the the, the, the cultural brand that this industry. I mean, carries with it, you know, and try to ensure that it's not taken over, you know, by the, 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 the foreign interventionists, you know, and, 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 and operate like a, some kind of foreign entity. It is important that the Jamaicans, right, have a big part to play in this own industry and should benefit i mean from this industry and so i mean i'd love i'd love to see you know things get organized i'd love to see some more unity amongst the industry players and i'd love to see the government take a more proactive approach to defending the industry and the international scene you know and i'd also love to see more more outspokenness on the part of the players you know trying to get more people involved the music industry involved the ordinary rastafarians involved the youths who smoke herb i mean there's a lot of players who can be involved in in, in making this thing a movement to make it better um. Somebody asking me if banks or other financial institutions are not accommodating ganja entrepreneurs. How does the money become legal? Not even the US have solved that. Yes. We haven't solved it either. We haven't okay. solved it, but you must recognize also though that merchandise surrounding the brands in the ganja industry globally sell more than the product itself so just a way to say that your company will you may not be able to bank the ganja sales you can certainly bank the merchandising right so we have to you know we have ways around yeah um certain it's, as, industry, long, as long as yeah. as long as you're doing it as long as you're doing it as a legitimate business no, no, I, that's what I'm saying. It... I mean, yes, I yes. mean, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, even here in the U.S., right? As yeah, long as you're you're, you're 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 mm -hmm. doing you're doing a legitimate business, right? Um, you know, because like I said, the, Fed, the the feds the feds haven't legalized it or anything like that, but they still collect taxes. So, so right, you, but we're just saying tax... we just have to think through ways yes, of yeah. Yeah, there is a way to do it. There is a way to do it. So, well, I, I hope they understand. Now, if you um, if you have a diversified organization that that you're into different sales, then there's no way that they're going to be able to to say, well, specifically, you didn't make this much money selling uh, memorabilia. Uh, you know from Jamaica, from the crafts market or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. There's there's got, you know, because when you bank that money, you're saying it's come from your company. If, if your company also indulged in, in ganja sales um, and you're banking in various um, 
different uh, financial en entities. How can they challenge? That's, that's the thing. I guess I'd have to ask my brother uh, that question because he knows yeah. a lot. Of but but they... one of the factors, you know, the other day there was a lot of flack about the rise of the reggae, white reggae bands of California yeah. dominating the, the Grammy scene. and the yeah. reggae scene. Truth be told, it's the ganja industry of California that is behind that rise because that is how the, 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 the music and the ganja works culturally. It's the same thing that happened for Jamaica. So I'm just saying what I'm saying. <laughs> let, let, let me ask you this. As far as all the high-rise buildings in Jamaica, when you pay cash to your construction workers and they build a high rise building and it's completed. Well, they're, they're, no, they're no focused on that industry because so many high rises have gone up since the factor, you know, some, some law, I don't know the exact, but all the Jamaicans that have their cash in America um, have to show something or move it it's money laundering it's under the money laundering and it's uh, under uh, money laundering so now they're looking at the lawyers of jamaica i think they had something about lawyers you have to be clear money. where you and how source of funds and how funds the transactions and true. so on and the lawyers have to declare the clients and, those are and, new new um regulations. regulations now coming in but i heard like last two weeks that they're now focused on the construction industry because if you're in Jamaica, every two blocks is a apartment building. I don't know where the water is gonna come from. So um <laughs> to to deal with that, but <laughs> well, may, may, maybe they maybe they have to talk to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs because the Chinese built that building, they built it. And the plumbing system was uh, was not functioning. <laughs> Jill, can you give you a closing? Vicky. Yeah, let me let me thank you for having me. It was a very good discussion. Um, I, I I'd like to also say that it's good that this is a conversation that is happening in the diaspora. You asked what they can, the diaspora can do. Um, we can organize at that level and to pressure our policymakers because the same policymakers, the same politicians come to the diaspora during the election time exactly. to, get, to get funding. And so if it's, if it's a conversation that they realize it's not only happening on the ground here, but it's happening in the diaspora and the diaspora is also pushing from that end to get a more justified and a more inclusive industry. It is something that I know they will pay attention to. And as Maxine says, help and supporting the lobbying because lobbying without resources is very difficult, very challenging to stay at the table. And, and so Herb, we, we thank you for offering us a platform. Thank you for this platform, but having the conversation <coughs> and pushing the envelope from that end can also help us on this side of the, of, of the fence as well. Mm. Just a question to Vicky. Do you have a mechanism for the diaspora to help you? No, well, that's what we're going to set up. Okay, right. okay, right. okay. Okay. Uh, when we start... I, I, when when, when we started out, the topic was Jamaica, Jamaica ganja industry, who benefit? And from the discussion, it is clear that the Rasta man is not benefiting. Or the ordinary because Jamaican. Ordinary not Jamaican not benefiting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it, you have some guys from overseas and their friends in high places who start to dominate the industry. But I think the biggest challenge to the industry is the unity. 
if you can pull together the unity, the grassroots people coming together and demanding this industry, they will listen because someone is telling me that the the prime minister owns a ganja company. You know, he's one of the players in the industry. And I'm like, what? He said, yeah. So it's not that they don't want the industry, you know, what they want to ensure is to make sure that they are the ones benefiting. At all time. You know, they are the ones benefiting. And it's something we should keep our eyes on, you know, continuous the discussion of, of this issue and pay attention to it. Because our people suffer. Spend time at jail, policeman bust up with head, all sort of thing over the good ganja. You know, uh, and so, and you must realize that we uh, I didn't even think about it, but I thought about it because of this discussion that we in the diaspora can also bend, you know, build industry for ourselves based on our culture. Exactly. We just need to, you know, within the America, the, the states that the, there's legalization using our culture with a proviso that a, a, a percentage of what we do, that's how you can make a difference. A percentage of what you do using your culture, you give back to the root. You understand? Sure. Yeah, because where we can't export, we can have our companies, that's how I say cookies and these different brands do. Yes. They yeah. open companies in the different states. Yeah. You understand? And 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 promote themselves. So the Jamaican diaspora, not just to, to, to put a ganja company because you're Jamaican, but you do it in mind that you're using the culture in a way and the branding and that your standards of products that you would generate here would also, you know, give a percentage back through a trust mechanism or a trust fund to assist the market in Jamaica, because we have to fight them. We can't just be depending, understanding how the, the thing is set up, to be exporting our culture from Jamaica. We have to be well, like well, Grace not Kennedy. Only that, but the amount of money that the diaspora has to send back to Jamaica, it would make more sense to help a local entity, a Rastas or others, who are willing to spread the wealth. Yes. To help them set up in Jamaica and spread that wealth around. You wouldn't right, because be needing we... to bank any money or, or violate money laundering rules. You, exactly. You'd be helping other people in underserved communities. You'd be bringing them up to speed. Exactly. Yeah. And on that, okay. note, and on that note, I want to thank you all for for a lively discussion. I want to thank also the audience. We have now 134 listeners. Thank you all. And remember, like, share, and subscribe. The more you subscribe, the more popular our channel grow. And okay. on that note, thank you, everyone, brothers and sisters. And we'll meet again next Sunday. Can we confirm, Maxine, you'll be with us? Yes, I'm a co-host. What about Vicky? <laughs> Vicky, you'll be with us? Vicky, will you be here? I'll pass you and visit. <laughs> well, I think um, Rupert is going to, will, will manhandle her, woman handle her, and bring her forward. <laughs> <laughs> Let's tell Rupert. Oh, okay. All right. He, 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 he heard 